Hey guys, Alex and Will here from Stay Frosty Cinema. And this is the first episode of our Call of Duty Black Ops 2 weapon review series, Firing Range, on the MTAR Assault Rifle. In this video, we'll cover every inch of the MTAR leading up to a final verdict on the weapon. Now to kick things off, it's stat time. That part of the video where we take a behind the scenes look at the MTAR. The MTAR is full auto, and you can change it to burst fire with select fire. The MTAR shoots at 750 rounds per minute. The in-game description is that it is a Fully automatic assault rifle, versatile and strong overall. The MTAR's close range or maximum damage is 40 damage per hit. At 10 yards, it'll drop off to its medium range, 30 damage per hit. And at 38 yards, it'll drop off to its long range damage of 24. The move speed of the MTAR is standard for assault rifles at 95%. The aim down sights move speed is 40% and with stock it is 88%. The raise time of the MTAR is 0.68 seconds and the drop time is 0.35 seconds. The MTAR has 30 rounds in a clip. The MTAR's reload, normal, that's with some bullets still in the gun, is 2.49 seconds. But with an empty mag, it's 2.97 seconds. Our opinion on the recoil is that it's moderate and manageable and select fire can help you manage it if you need the extra help. And you can see here in this clip the difference between fully auto and with select fire. Now for a weapon description. Time to get factual. The Micro Tavor, also designated as the X95 or Tavor 2, is an Israeli compact weapon designed with special ops in mind. The MTAR 21 is a relative of the recognizable TAR 21, something we saw in Modern Warfare 2. In 2009, the MTAR was selected to be the standard infantry weapon of the Israeli Defense Forces. Now let's talk about our recommended attachments. Yes, attachments. Well, now we find that it actually has manageable irons. That's the one of the Some... things I do like about the MTAR is that mm -hmm. it has nice That iron really sets. matters in Black Ops 2 because you can sacrifice a site for something else in the pick 10 system. Definitely. And some of these things uh, that work well, uh, for instance, quick draw. Kind quick of. Quick draw is just sort of, you know, that's stats or that sort would of spreads out. Either choose between, if you really want to run quick, quick draw or laser sight. Yeah. Because you either want to aim down sights faster, hit your target faster, or just have that smaller spread. Yeah. It's, the, the, much... it's close range. It has the fastest time to kill at its close range, like three shot kill, of all the full yeah. auto assault rifles. I think. But one then, of the, yeah. like, that is lost. That three shot uh, kill ability is lost super quickly. So you might want to capitalize on that with select, um, I mean, laser sight. Yeah, that's the thing. So with the MTAR, you sort of got them um, taken into account that this thing is good at close range. So laser is one of the things you can you can yeah. use. To... So it's probably laser sight or quick draw. I wouldn't really run them both. Select fire is definitely a ballsy attachment. As you saw, it re definitely reduces the um, the recoil and adds some effectiveness at range. There's mm -hmm. times where if you do end up going for a long range kill with the MTAR, it's just all over the place. You don't really want to put select fire on, like, deal with burst fire. Mm. Quick, I mean, fore, foregrip is also a really good yeah. idea. Yeah, foregrip is good. The thing, about, the thing about select fire, though, is it does have its place on long range mm -hmm. encounters. At close range, select fire you're, is... You're mostly going to be killing in four yeah. shots with the MTAR, so yeah. I would run foregrip instead of a select fire. Yeah, That's I, would, I would agree with that. But still, it's out there. It's interesting to try mm -hmm. with almost all guns. Also, the suppressor is a stealthy approach. Apparently, it mm -hmm. works pretty well. Because yeah. it's, it's range isn't exactly its high point anyway. Suppressor does I wouldn't, affect its I range. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run it because I wouldn't want to... I haven't seen how suppressor deals with uh, the ranges because... The ranges in Black Ops, like in, gra in other CODs, it was gradual. Like it would be a diagonal line from its mm -hmm. max to its minimum, where they're like stairs, basically, mm -hmm. in yeah. Black Ops 2. So I don't really know how Suppressor works, but, still, um, yeah. but I would be wary of it. And then Stock's also not a bad idea, just yeah. to have that... that cause they nerfed drop shotting, so sometimes a strafing is a better idea. Yeah. So certain attachments capitalize on the MTAR's weaknesses, and in specific, I think we, we've agreed that the attachments you might want to give a try uh, are the ones besides your besides sights? Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend the uh, MTAR two if you did if you couldn't use its iron sights because, yeah. like, it, its yeah. iron sights like I can see how some people would hate them. They remind you of a shotgun and whatnot. Yeah. But if you can use them, that's like super good. Definitely. All right, moving on to strong points. That's where this gun excels. Now, the iron sights do allow for attachment diversity. That's a really good thing. Now, like Alex just said, I mean, not everybody's going to fall in love with the iron sights, but I certainly have no problem using them. Mm -hmm. And so that 
That's a good. That's a good. You might want to sacrifice them for either an MMS or target, target finder. Yeah, the two best sights mm -hmm. in my personal opinion. Um, at close range, this gun is powerful. It trumps its long range power, but still, close range, this thing is damn effective. But it's almost point blank close range that the three shot kill is going to be effective. Yeah, it's, it's a ten yard, so that's from like from me to the end of this room, and by that time, know. it's going. Yeah. I don't know. The it's R about room. ten yards. <laughs> Uh, that's all I gotta know. And then, Just um... About, you know, how much you need to get another first down. Yeah. <laughs> Ten yards, and then, yeah, it drops off. So that's mm -hmm. that's a problem, but it is good at close range. And some maps are pretty predominantly close range, and the MTAR mm -hmm. will be good at it. One thing that um, I adore about the MTAR is it's just its general comfortability. Like, I know um, a good friend of mine isn't exactly a top-quality COD player, and he loves the MTAR, and simply because... It's comfortable, like it's one of those guns that like you pick up and doesn't feel like awkward. One thing I find sp like specifically awkward is the Type 25. It yeah. feels weird. Which we'll be covering in... Yeah, there will be a future episode. The on next, that, but... or the ne second next episode. Next episode yeah. mm -hmm. So anyway, that's a good, that's a strong point of this one, um, is comfortability. Mm -hmm. It's useful, it can be used for a long time. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, one of my, another different friend this time, has it gold. He's like, it's his best gun out there. It's, uh, and I was like, what? The MTAR? Statistically, it's not like a shining star. It doesn't star. shine out, but it's like, like, yeah, whatever, I like it. Can it. Be, it can be used in every situation, oh, but yeah. that doesn't mean it should be used in every situation. That's right, yeah. It is also a strong, versatile default weapon. It could mm -hmm. be much worse for being unlocked at level 4. I think uh, anyone who has problems with it needs to realize it is unlocked right it's along probably your probably like that thing I'll use up until I unlock like yeah. <laughs> something I want more. Yeah. I actually really like it now. Like I went back and used it and like I like oh, it more yeah. than the type. I actually went back after not really liking it, and I used it quite a bit more. And I, you know, you sort of, it grows on you, right? Yeah, it grows on you. All right, now it's time for the main highlight, the verdict. The MTAR is a strong gun, not just for assault rifles, and not just for weapons unlocked at level 4 alongside your custom classes, but a strong weapon overall. The MTAR's considerable fault in range is one that you'll notice, sure, but that doesn't mean it ruins the experience is something you can adapt to. For many, the MTAR will quickly be left in the dust, maybe used in three or four games, and then you drop it when you've unlocked something else. The thing about the MTAR that makes it such a capable weapon is the ability for it to be changed in so many different ways. Whether it's a stealth approach or a fine-tuned tactical layout with minimalized recoil and improved mobility, the MTAR is sure to surprise you with its versatility and prosperity. On our scale of 1 to 10, the MTAR star rifle is awarded with a 7, which is good. So there you have it. Leave your opinions on the MTAR below. Make sure to like this video if you like the MTAR, if you agree with us. Give it a favorite, we'd really appreciate that. Let, your, know, let your friends know about the MTAR I'm and sure this video. I'm sure they'll learn something. I bet you didn't know it was the official weapon of the Israeli Defense Forces before I told you. I knew that. <laughs> anyway, subscribe for lots more episodes of Firing Range. We are fueled by subscribers, so if you want to see more of stat time and, and verdicts and everything, just subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Keep them outside, <laughs> dummy. And, and until next time, stay frosty. That's right.